In these episodes, we're talking about God as our provider. If we look at what God gives, we can see a story in our stuff. Evaluating what we have versus what we need can help us make some necessary adjustments to life and take the next step. So far, we've learned two principles in the story of our stuff. Number one, that God is a joyous and generous giver. Yet, despite God's generosity, we do see a problem in the world. Not everyone has enough. So we said in the last episode that the story of our stuff is disrupted by sin. In this episode, we examine the third principle in the story of our stuff. We're called to be stewards, not consumers. So what's the difference between a steward and a consumer? The difference is in the way one views his stuff. Stewards manage things. Their attitude is one of contentment. The byproduct of a steward is more. Stewards maintain. They make sure that their resources stay productive, usable, and workable. Stewards multiply. They make wise investments and take what they have and turn it into more. Stewards distribute. They become a conduit of delivery to others. They're wise in their trade. Stewards produce. Stewards are able to combine resources and make them more valuable by creating something that's in demand. And stewards protect. They see the value of what they have and also see the value in what others have. They're wise, not wasteful. The Apostle Paul had a relationship of stewardship with the church in Philippi. Recorded in scriptures is Paul's report to his supporters concerning the status of his mission. This conversation exemplifies perfectly the attitude and principles of stewardship. Notice the indications of maintenance, multiplication, distribution, production, and protection that are within these paragraphs. Listen to Philippians 4, 10 through 20. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I'm in to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. And in every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share in my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I'm well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts that you sent a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Did you hear it? Multiplication, maintenance, distribution, production, and protection are all within Paul's conversation with the Philippians. It exemplifies the principle. Stewards manage things. Consumers use things up. The consumer's attitude is one of greed. The byproduct is waste. In the desperate pursuit to consume more and more, the consumer ends up with less and less. With no thought of faithfulness toward God and the elements of management stewardship, the consumer eventually finds himself in a desert land. In Jeremiah 17, 5 through 11, the prophet of God warns the people of the end result of consumerism. Listen to this. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He's like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good to come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. He's like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when the heat comes. For its leaves remain green and it's not anxious in the year of drought. For it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Like the partridge that gathers a brood she did not hatch, so is he who gets riches but not by justice. In the midst of his days, they will leave him 
and at his end, he will be a fool. A lesson quickly learned in hiking is that consuming resources instead of managing them is not wise. Once on an overnight backpacking trip, I packed everything that I love to eat. There was a maximum weight limit for my pack, and I was determined to fill it to the brim with my favorite things. Starting up the trail, I began to consume. Uh, it was not long before I was sluggish, sick, sorely lacking what I really needed to complete the hike. Even worse, I was destined to carry a pack up a very steep incline that was weighed down with wasted stuff I didn't need. Successful thru-hikers know how to be stewards of their stuff. A proper management plan is essential if you want to go far. So which are you? Are you a steward who's content, who manages, who multiplies? Or are you a consumer who is greedy and wasteful and just wants more? These are important questions for us to ask ourselves if we're on this journey of wanting to go far with God. In the next episode, we'll look at the fourth and final principle of our stuff, and that is that the gospel gives us a redemptive lens through which we can inventory our stuff and take the next step. Until then, visit my website, brianbranham.com. There you'll find all kinds of great resources that are going to help you to go far. Check out Backport Psalms. There is a video episode devotional from every chapter in one of my favorite books of the Bible, the Bible's Book of Psalms. Thanks for listening to today's episode of A Walk Through the Summer.